Data East was a Japanese video game company. They did over 150 games and published 10 games for the Sega Genesis and Mega Drive. The Immortal John Hancock here with a Sega Genesis ranking video. I've had a lot of fun doing these. The other videos that I've done will be below. If you're new to the channel, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button as I'm uploading videos every week and I'm having a lot of fun. You folks have requested this video. I did a vote on the community section in YouTube and you chose Data East. And so here we go covering all 10 games that they published. And you know, Data East is a company that often gets overlooked, but it actually had some decent games on the Genesis and I'm gonna be showing them. And in today's video, I'm gonna be using this scoring guide. Let's get going. And so there'll also be a link below if you wanna do it yourself. First up is Atomic Runner. And this is a great run and gun. I have a lot of great positive memories about this game now. When you first play this game, you may notice that the control is a little different. Some people really don't like the control. I actually like it and got into a groove and love playing this game. It's got great graphics. The character is small, but it's a lot of fun. It's very different and unique. There isn't really anything else like it around. It, it definitely has its own unique feel. If you can get past the unusual control, and it's challenging difficulty, you're gonna have a blast with this game. It is pretty relentless. I've had this game in my collection a long time and I've really enjoyed it for quite a bit. And I've shared with others why I like this game and hopefully you can play this game and enjoy it. I'm gonna give this a B. This is a solid B. A very unusual run and gun and one that stands out. Next up is a fairly broken game that I enjoy playing and it's a lot of fun and that's Captain America and the Avengers. And this is a game that I purchased back in the day when I had a Sega Genesis. And I wanna do a collector's note here. The original clamshell has a collector pin on the actual case, a sticker, and inside it has a Captain America pin. And so this is my pin and I know it's kind of hard to see, but I got this. A long time ago, it had a yellow back to it. This Captain America pin is fairly challenging to find in a complete copy of this game. Now let's talk about this game, okay? It is an arcade port and it's one that is okay, so-so. I like this version better than the Super Nintendo version. It's just kind of clunky, you know? It's got some uh, funny voiceovers. They're so bad, it's good. You cannot escape. You will be the one escaping, you know, and it's got some fairly bad voice work in it. There is a stutter and load times often when new sections of the level appear. Uh, this is a game I did beat back in the day and you can play one of four Avengers. I'm a comic book fan, so I like this game a little bit more than others. You can play Iron Man, Hawkeye, Vision, or Captain America. You know, I wanted to show Vision in this video. He picks up things in with one hand in this game with his immense strength and so, I like this game. It's not a good game. It is fun. I think it's better if you're a comic book fan, you may give it a higher grade, or if you play it with two player. I'm gonna give it a C. It's an okay game. It's rough around the edges. It's definitely worth a playthrough at least once. Next is a game that I did not grow up with. This is a game I got way later in my collection. A really strange premise. And so what you are is you're one of two guys, Will or Rick, Will and Rick are fighting over a girl, Jenny. And so you are chasing her down and you have to race through the level, competing with one another, trying to outsmart the other person. You have a bomb, you can jump, there's obstacles, and whoever gets to the end of the level wins the heart. And so it's a, it's a pretty strange game. This is a two player game and one player. And so the split screen scenario is so, so I think this game is just okay. I never really got into this game. I tried it several times. It's just one of those games. Like some people may enjoy this game for me. It's just okay. It's not bad for me. It, it just doesn't do it. I, I'd rather play a brawler. I'd rather play uh, a something else than this type of game. It's a C for me. For some, it may be higher. Next up, this is a game that I probably had in my collection for a bit before actually spending some time in it. And this is a decent platformer, and this is High Seas Havoc. High Seas Havoc really is a decent kind of a pirate theme, 
platformer. Uh, your character is, is well animated. The levels are great. There's 13 levels total. There's boss fights. I really like what they did with this game. The best way to describe it would be kind of like a slower moving Sonic with a pirate theme. And so I really do like what they did with this game as decent music. Um, I thought the, the action platform is pretty good. The gem collecting gets a little bit old, but you know, with these platform platformers, there's so many platformers coming out in the 90s. This is just one that gets often overlooked and it's actually really decent. It is above average in my opinion. On a Sega Genesis that didn't really need another one. And so I could see why this got overlooked. You know, there's just so many options that were wonderful on the Sega Genesis. But you know what? I'm gonna give this a B. It's definitely worth checking out. This next game is near and dear to my heart and I just did a Switch collection with the Turrican series. You may wanna check that out, but this is Mega Turrican and this was made by Factor 5 but published by Data East. This to me is one of the best Turricans. I grew up with this Turrican. I know a lot of people grew up with the Amiga Turrican. This one was catered and made for the Sega Genesis and it shows it has lots of extra bills and whistles. It took the Turrican series, added a grappling hook, tons of weapons and just a volley of enemies, lots of hidden secrets, everything that you would like about a Turrican game, but made specifically for the Sega Genesis. I love this game. It's one of the better action run and gun games on the Sega Genesis. I'm a huge fan of Factor 5. In fact, this is probably one of the first games that I played that they made. And I'm gonna give this an S. I really love this game. You can't go wrong with Mega Turrican. In my opinion, it's one of the best Turricans made. It's got excellent graphics, special effects, details, music. Oh my goodness, control's great. Check it out. Halfway through, and I wanna show you the rankings. This next game is a little bit like Captain America and the Avengers. You take an arcade game, try to convert it to the Sega Genesis. Now, you're, you're probably wondering, wait, Sega published this in the United States. You're right, but Data East published this for the Mega Drive. And so I'm gonna include it with this list as they did the arcade game as well. If you've played this game, you're probably wondering, wait, this is a little bit like Heavy Barrel. This is technically its sequel two heavy barrel, there's keys, and the keys at the end of the each stage, you can unlock weapons and power-ups. It's pretty cool. Now, uh, the, the, the thing about the arcade game is add a rotating joystick and add a really cool way of controlling the character. Well, they had to adapt this for the Sega Genesis. Does it entirely work? No. Is it my favorite military shooting game on the Sega Genesis? No. Is it above average? Yes, I like this. My biggest complaint is, is twofold actually. It's one player and I really wish this was a two player game. The other thing too is that control is a little bit off. And so you have a weird way where um, you're, you have fire automatic and so uh, it's easy to waste grenades in this game. The control's just a little bit off. And so I did play this quite a bit. I rented this mostly. You can't go wrong with it. Uh, the stages are cool. It's pretty much uh, a standard military game until you get to the end. And then the final boss is just weird. And so I do recommend this as a good playthrough. I do like some of the power-ups in it. And if you're a fan of Heavy Barrel and you, haven't, you didn't know that there was a sequel, here it is. Check it out. And I think the Sega Genesis version is pretty decent. So I'm going to give it a B as I think it's above average and it's a decent representation on the Sega Genesis. Next up is Side Pocket 2, but in the States it was called Minnesota Fats Pool Legend. And the other weird thing about this is that it's like sideways. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why they did that, but they did. And so Side Pocket 2. Now I like Side Pocket, a decent arcade game, and the, the original Genesis one is pretty solid. What they did is they tried to expand this, add some additional features, and what do I think of it? Eh, I think it's okay. I think the trick shot mode in it's pretty is is all right. But what other thing I don't like about it is you have to wait for your opponent to to make a decision before they play. I I don't like that. Just sitting there waiting for your opponent to make a decision. They're trying to make it like more realistic or not. I hate that part about this game. It actually loses a grade because of that. Um, some people of pool fans, you may enjoy this more than others. 
you know, for me, it's just a C. Pools kind of take it or leave it. I'd rather play pool in, in person, but you know, for a video game, this is okay. Another one, Outrunners, okay? Outrunners kind of has the same issue as Dash and Desperados. So Outrunners, uh, for some, is a wonderful racing game. It's got uh, lots of some different modes in it. It's got some decent music. You know, after, but it's, it's what I don't like about it is the split screen. It, it really is distracting. There's so much on the screen other than the actual screen that you're racing on it can be it, it takes away from the aesthetics of the game i wish it was just you could see your car and have a full screen I, i'm not a fan of that aspect i think it takes away from this game and it's got decent graphics and you know i really think that it's it's an okay representation of the arcade game i like the arcadey racing games and for this one i would prefer the original outrun this one just with the split screen i think with two player option it might be okay but i'd rather play something like road rash i don't know what it is about this game i just couldn't get into it played it several times i gotta give it a c next up Played the arcade game, like the Genesis version, and that's Side Pocket. Side Pocket really, to me, takes normal pool and makes it a great video game. No, is it realistic? No. Um, I really like, it's got two main modes in it. It's got the actual game, which really isn't pool. It's, it's pocket billiards is what they call it. And I really like it though. It makes a good video game. It makes pool fun, it's simple. There's a score. And then there's trick shot, and some of the trick shots are really tough to do. I like both modes in this. In fact, uh, and there's a lot of thinking to do with each version. And so if you're just wanting to check out a, a, a classic video game pool game, you can go wrong with Side Pocket, and this is a B. I like it. Everybody knows I love me some brawlers, and we got two crude dudes as the final game that Data East published for the Sega Genesis. This cyberpunk brawler is really cool what i love about it is that you can pick up many different items you can pick up players you can pick up opponents it's got really cool mutant bosses in it it's got decent graphics fast gameplay and it's a decent arcade port you know this is an example of what the sega genesis could do it really offered kind of these uh, I, I say b tier games that many people have kind of overlooked. The Sega Genesis library had an abundant amount of these games. And a two player adding to this, uh, I really like that aspect of it. It's a little rough around the edges, it's a little bit repetitive, but I think this is a solid, this is a solid game. In fact, because it's a brawler, because it's two player, typically, you know, some people might rank this a B, but for me, I'm gonna give it an A because this is a game I would go back with someone, I would beat it, I would play through it, because this game is awesome. I do think it's one of the better games that Data East released for the Sega Genesis, and there you have it. Here are the final rankings for me. What did you think? What are your favorites? How would you rank them? There's gonna be a link below that you can rank it yourself. I wanna thank everybody for the ongoing support, and I wanna hear your stories. I wanna hear your stories about playing these games, what is your favorite? Did you rent any of these? What are your experiences playing these growing up? I had a lot of fun doing this video. I have a lot of fun talking about Sega Genesis. It's near and dear to my heart, and I have many more ranking videos to come. Thank you so much. If you like what you see, hit that like and subscribe button and click the bell as I'm uploading videos every week. You folks are wonderful and beautiful. Thank you so much for the ongoing support. This is the immortal John Hancock, and you have a good day.